Ladies and gentlemen, we thought they couldn't do it, but they did. Phoenix won. Northern Storm, zero. Very back and forth game, very entertaining game. Closing out us for this last game of the night. My name is Kenos here with Slackosaurus Rex. So, Slack, you're Northern Storm. What do you do for game two? Yeah. Uh, you know, I really, really liked their draft in game one. I really did. Uh, I mean, me and you commented on it. The chat commented on it. We weren't too sure about Phoenix's draft. Um, I feel what it was. Northern Storm didn't capitalize on the early game advantages that they had given to them. And that is really what it came down to. Sivir wasn't able to get to a big enough power spike where she could overshadow the Callista. And Syndra, she wasn't able to get to a strong enough point where she could out overshadow the Nivea. Lofi, on the other hand, man, that man is just really annoying, is what I'm noticing. So I'm intrigued to see on how they are going to try to play against that. The thing that's interesting to me um, is that, I, I'm going to disagree with you on one point there, I feel as though the Syndra was, had surpassed the Anivia at one point. There just was that huge fight at Baron that got Ace the triple kill and got him back into the game. And I, oh. I think if that fight doesn't happen, that Phoenix loses easily. 100%. Uh, you know, if, if you... If you're able to shut down Ace, I've seen Ace do really good in the past. Um, I know that he's a when he gets a lead, he's able to punish people when he gets that lead. He can play very well when he's behind. So I think if they get Baconlicious ahead again, have Baconlicious bring his lead to other lanes and help them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, lane 8 would be good. Spicy Hot Meme was doing an incredible job, though. Lot of unexpected attacks. Got a several times. Great barrels. 50-50 um, on the barrels, but that's better than some Gragas' we've seen in the LCUS, I'd say. And obviously the great ones helped them pick up quite a few kills. Um, so for bans for Northern Storm, uh, I think they need to get with the Singed. For Loco asking if we're going to see a Singed ban. I think there's going to be a Singed ban. Um, I think there's going to be an Anivia ban. Um, and then I'm not sure who else they'll take off the board. Yeah, you know, Anivia, that's probably going to be a target ban. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Syndra, I would not be surprised to see her get taken off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Sy man, oh man, if I do not see Morgana get banned this game... <laughs> She has a 100% win rate today. That is something that is not acceptable. Please ban her. I think there's other priority bans for these teams. I mean, obviously, like you said, Morgana is very good, but the fear of people like Nocturne, uh, Anivia, things of that nature, I think will overshadow Morgana yet again. But we'll see. Right, and... It's not something that I expect them to just go like, hey, you know what? We are going to ignore all the rest of the bands and go for that Morgana. If you aren't banning the Morgana, though, go and pick it. That's it. Yeah, and they could first pick Morgana on Team Phoenix here. So we'll see if they uh, decide to do that or not. Northern Storm um, has, of course... The two pick option. We'll see if Phoenix decides to just lock in. Like if that singe does not get banned, I'm expecting a first pick singed. Quite honestly, um, they've done that before. But um, <laughs> sorry, chat's is distracting me. The um, the interesting thing that I'm also looking forward to is um, whether or not they end up going with a little more normal jungle. I'd say. What was your opinion on how the Rek'Sai was doing? I I wasn't really that impressed by it. Yeah, I feel like the Rek'Sai could have done a lot more. And I mean a lot more. Um, like I said, I was right away off of the... Right out the gate. I said, why aren't you going 
Conquer. Conquer is super strong. Um, you definitely could have used that against that enemy team. Mm -hmm. And especially with the fact that they had a lot of tanks. You do Conquer, you do true damage, and next thing you know, you're shredding through them. Now, he did decent. They did get the W, but I feel like Conquer could have helped push the Rek'Sai forward and been a little bit more of a dominant force that he was kind of missing out on in mm -hmm. the early levels. Rek'Sai was, of course, doing some really good knockups, um, right at the end of the game, especially there. And like I said, I want to watch that big fight where they got the first inhibitor to see how much of an impact the Rek'Sai being ignored made. But at the same time, until I see that, I'm going to be down on the Rek'Sai, and I really hope that uh, Alon Z gets, goes with like a Moo or Zack in game two. Right, right. And yeah, a Moo and Zack, both of them were left up. Neither of them were picked. Yeah, I, th I think uh, it, depending on how game two goes, maybe if Phoenix wins, interrogating Alon Z Taurus about what the heck he's doing with his picks will be a good thing to do. But, awesome. Yep, we're going in. Once I find the correct window. Nope, that's not the right one. One second, folks. Do, 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 do. There we go. Alright, Nocturne first ban, not a surprise at all. I'm intrigued to see how Northern Storm is going to ban. Um... Yeah, I mean, you see Vigar right off the bat. I'm honest. I, I feel it. I feel it. Go ahead. Yeah, I... Um, I go ahead. You. I'm just going to say, I don't... Vigar, I would say, is like maybe Ace's fourth best mid laner. He's just the one that's scaring people because that's the one that Ace was forced to pick at the start of this split. Right. Um, I don't know how I feel about the Darius ban. Or the Malphite ban. Uh, the Malphite, like I said, I feel like that was more of a respect ban from the last uh, set that we just watched. Darius, on the other hand, I haven't seen too much Darius in uh, the LCUS, even when he isn't banned. Well, so. you, you, you weren't here the, the early weeks when Stelio just slaughtered people with Darius. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. I'm intrigued to see that Rek'Sai ban, though. I am intrigued by that. I, I'm having a feeling here that Spicy Hot Meme might be playing Rek'Sai. And so, Alon Zetardis taking it was keeping it away from Spicy Hot Meme. And they target that Singe. That's... That might play a big thing in it, but... You know, there we go. And V is getting Sivir this time around. Yep, grabbing the Sivir. Great choice there. We'll see if Morgana gets picked in the first couple of picks, or if they leave her for the second setup here. We do get the Shen pick up. Exciting to see him. Wondering. Now, question is, where is that Shen gonna go? I'm feeling top right now, but we'll see. Spicy Hot Meme, um, a lot of options available. Did go do very well in that Gragas. I'm not sure he'll pick it up again. But, of course, this may not be a jungle pick at all. It could also be a Taric jungle, you know? Who knows? <laughs> it, it could be a Taric jungle. You know, Spicy Hot Meme is all about the meme. He certainly is. So, two tanks already picked up. How much better would have that last game gone for Northern Storm with an invincible button? Uh, I think it would have been crazy. You have a Taric ult. Boom. I... That... I feel like the Tom Kench didn't get online enough that they wanted him to. Mm -hmm. So he also didn't do too much weird stuff with his ultimate either. I think I saw the ultimate used twice. Yeah, I only saw it used twice. One of them he canceled, and the other one he went to go dive to a tier two that he didn't even follow up. So we are gonna have the incredible bot lane of uh, Sivir and Thresh though. So that's going to be really brutal for the Tarek and whoever he's paired up with. Alawi for Lofi. Lo I love this Alawi pick. You pull out the uh, soul of Shen, you get some damage with your tentacles, call it a good trade. 
Man, that Hecarim. My game actually halfway froze when Hecarim got picked. It's like, wait, they let that through? And there's the Nivea ban. Boom. They left it up. They kind of taunted it. They're like, you know what? We're going to take it away. That is very interesting that, I mean, Ace has generally always let himself be one of the last picks unless he's just really fed up with getting banned out a particular day. So the fact that they didn't pick up the Anivia, who's going to ban Alawi, right? No, 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 right. Nobody's banning Alawi. So maybe Ace doesn't want to get counterpicked, though. But that option is, of course, still available because Northern Storm is going to get the last pick. So no matter what Ace picks, he will get counterpicked, most likely. And I'm intrigued to see who Ace decides to pick. Banning the Syndra, the Fizz, the Anivia, and the Vigar all off the table. And you're up against four tanks. That's that's kind of a tough situation. Well, he, he could do Lux. He could do Xerath. Those are two of his big ones that are still available. Tristana getting picked up here. Interested to see who the jungle is going to be. Amumu is still available. Worth noting Morgana is not going to be in this game. Unless it becomes the mid lane pick. Right. And, and heck, you might actually see that Hecram comes flying in at you and you hit him with a Q. Uh, fun fact, if he's in the middle of his uh, E animation and you hit him with a Q, he'll still keep going. Mm -hmm. So if you Q him and he goes through you under your turret, he's locked there for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, Lux can do that too, and Ace likes Lux more than Morgana, my sure. understanding. Vi picked up, that's one of Ellen Z. Tardis's classic picks, played a lot back in the day. Not sure I like it here, I don't know why he's suddenly not playing Amumu and Zack. Oh, and Ace going with the Azir again. Lest we so, forget. Yeah, and now we're going to see Baconlicious. He gets the counter pick. So, let's see what they choose. You're not picking a Kali. I was about to say, I really hope not, because that is Northern Storm locking in a big ol' L. Yeah, I'm not falling for this. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're not fooling me. Alright, Echo. Echo is here mid lane. Possibly. Only the most interesting games here at the LCUS. I was uh, I was about to say, uh interesting to pick the Echo into Azir. Um I mean granted Azir tries to throw his soldiers at Echo and Echo can just run past them. Mm -hmm. Um I could... intrigued to see if Tristana comes online and just starts dominating. We'll see how that goes, but... An interaction I want to see here is if Azir alts Echo, I want Echo to rewind back to where he was behind the shields. Yes, I like that. The moment that his, uh, you know, goes in, he takes a bunch of damage, or wouldn't take any damage because of the invulnerability. Mm -hmm. The moment that he starts getting low, and after all the CC, alt out. Mm -hmm. That's something that I'm really looking forward to seeing. A lot of survivability on this team. You've got the Taric ult, the Echo ult, the Shen ult, um, Tristana's ability to jump away. This could be scary for uh, Phoenix, but on the other side, they have great ability to lock down the people who they're fighting. Uh, Vi, of course, can do a lot of that. Um, Alawi can make them wish they hadn't run away. And, of course, we know how Gregosaurus is on Thresh. Right. Um, now, I see a very, very good team comp for any fight that ends up coming out, coming out of Phoenix. I see Northern Storm, and I see a lot of survivability throughout that team fight. So I'm going to, you know, long-winded team fights are definitely going to go in the favor of uh, Northern Storm. Mm-hmm. You have the initiation and everything else coming out of Phoenix. Which one is going to prevail? I am, you know, as much as I want to say Northern Storm, I have very, very high hopes on Phoenix because I feel like Phoenix is going to have Northern Storm's number this game. I don't know. We'll see. I look at Northern Storm's team and I feel terrified. Just, just quite, quite terrified. 
Um, I, I, I've, I mean, the Hecarim is a big part of it, obviously, but we have seen Tarek get some amazing ults whenever he is brought out, and it's possible that that could just swing everything the other way. So I'm looking forward to seeing which way these games go, or this game goes, I should say. Alawi is always a wild card. No one ever really can predict where uh, she's going to end up in the spectrum. She's either right. great or she just ends up not having that much of an impact for a while. But I think that Lofi has shown us that he can do very well on very weird champions in the past. And I believe he actually has played Alawi previously in the LCUS as well. Yeah, I mean, pulled out the Singed, got the first blood. That was surprising. Very mm -hmm. surprising. Um, so yeah, I am very excited to see Lofi play Alawi. And uh, all I can say, if Shen plays this lane safe, boom, perfect. You leave perfect openings for Hecarim to come in, get some good ganks, potentially get Shen ahead. Uh, the more that you free up Shen the more that he's able to make those ulti plays across the map. Mm -hmm. Saving and, the Echo, saving the Trist. And we get a Hecarim rushing in with a Shen ult on him. Even scarier. That, that's, that's a train you want to miss. But, like most Alawis, no skin. So that's unfortunate. No skin on Echo either, though. Hmm. I don't know. This, this is interesting. Now, I really like Hecarim. Hecarim is somebody that I picked up last season and did not put down, and he is like one of my highest win rate junglers right now. Uh, and I highly respect that arcade. Um, the same time, though, I love the uh, Warring Kingdoms and the Snowstorm Sivir. Both of them, good choices. Yeah, I think I'll give it to Phoenix, if only because Blood Moon Shen is probably like my fourth favorite Shen skin. You mean Northern Storm? No, I'm giving it to Phoenix because I'm not a huge fan of Blood Moon Shen. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, now, I do. Dragon I do want to point something out real fast. Mm hmm. Non skin related. What? Sivir is running. Unsealed Spellbook. Okay, very interesting, that. Wonder what so, kind of variety she's going to be going for. Uh, and that's... I'm intrigued. I'm very, very intrigued. Might be going for some cheeky teleport plays. Cheeky teleport plays, maybe uh, double ignite, because I do see Gregosaurus running ignite. Um, double smites. There's a variety of different things that they could do. Looks like there won't be any uh, cheekiness this time from uh, Northern Storm. Looks like both, yeah, both teams are going for a very defensive uh, lineup, both defending there. Oh, then again. And Ace and his, uh, Ace and his soldiers. Echo just going back real quick. Yes, we see them. They're there. Alright. Everybody knows where everybody is. We're just gonna keep pinging. I'm intrigued to see on how fast-paced they're going that each team is going to try to uh you know start it mm -hmm. um i mean heck you could see spicy hot meme right off a of blue buff he might try to go bot and try to do that cheesy level two gank but uh phoenix does have two very good wards one right next to their lane I can see Ace with Azir being very aggressive against uh, this Echo. And I think Echo realizes that and why he's not really diving too deep here. 
immediately a couple of stabs there from the Azir soldiers. But the trade-off back is pretty good too. And as much as I was just talking about the Hecarim doing a cheese gank, you have Vi, the bot lane, prepping for a gank. I think, wasting a yeah. lot of time. Yeah, I was going to say, this is too much of a waste. Lofi and Amaya fighting it out. Amaya getting most oh, of the damage. Oh, TARDIS flashing right into the wall, though. So, no flash on TARDIS. It's okay, TARDIS. The stream didn't see it. <laughs> we'll just say your flash is on cooldown because glitches. That's it. Glitches. Lofi taking a lot of damage up here in the top lane. Is winning in the CS lead, but not by much. And I would imagine Spicy Me might rotate up here. There is no ward. Nope. Doesn't seem like he's going to do that. Would have been an interesting gank, though. I, I'm very surprised that he didn't go in. Uh, they're, I mean, up until just now, uh, they were both level 2. Hecarim would have been level 2. It would have been a really, really good option. Both junglers kind of in the mid lane area. Once again, the lane with the Sivir is pushing very hard here. Uh, the heals from Chaos are obviously going to be helping quite a bit. All right, Mid lane, Ace is winning in CS by a reasonable margin as well. But Baconlicious using his mana to get some CS as well. Shen walking very strangely there. Maybe I haven't I'm looked. Wait, I'm waiting to see uh, this bot lane. I'm, I'm waiting to see when they're going to have their first skirmish. Um, because you have a hook from Gregosaurus on the Tristana. Boom. That Tristana is very likely to die. You have a good stun off of Chaos. And whoever gets stunned, whether, whether it be Gregosaurus or Envy, one of them is probably going to die. Well, I don't know. I mean, you, for Tristana, she can jump out, right? And for Envy, um, not only does Envy have the anti-stun shield, but they've got uh, the lantern as well to pull them out from any stun that they did end up taking. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. So yeah, I mean, I do see that uh, Phoenix does have a safer bot right. lane. Here comes the pony, though. Is not spotted. Ghosting! Not Going Just... straight for the uh, Thresh. Oh, there's the heal. Oh, there's the Here's pull. The hook. One more turret shot! Oh! Flashes after it's too late, and first blood goes to Envy. That was a great turnaround there by Phoenix. Thresh under turret, very scary. But now, not to be outdone, Pony is coming back around. Ace has no way to see this coming. Does have flash available. Jumps, should flash as well. Does turret shot, hits Baconlicious. Here comes Alon Z. He's not able to turn around on him, though, because he used his dash already. All right. A lot of very exciting opening ganks here by Spicy Hot Meme. Most, uh... very surprised by that, that, uh... Hot Meme decided to go right from bottom, right to the top, or right to mid, to try to go for another gank. Yeah, he, he is very, uh... pick up and go with this Hecarim, once he decides he's online. I'd still want to know what's going on is this like did Shen get a new walking animation or is uh yeah so in fact what just got done getting implemented now I want to say this was not this patch but the patch prior they ended up adding a new uh no boots walking animation to several uh skins so weird Shen. so yeah it does look very funky well, hopefully he gets boots soon and our eyes can adjust. Right. Big rotation coming up here, though. Uh, Lofi is not going to see this until it is too late. Does have flash available. Shen does a big flash taunt. Let's see what happens here. Hecarim comes in. Lofi does the big alt as well. 
Shen gets taken oh. out, deciding to ult rather than falling back. Very interesting. Uh, tentacles aren't going to help Lofi that much, though. Lofi is going to go down here, I think. Big flash, though. Turns around, lands the ignite as well. Tentacles, unfortunately, not able to follow up when you're dead. Yeah, I feel like he decided that he wanted to keep going against the Hecarim, knowing saying that the Hecarim didn't have a whole lot of mana left. But then Baconlicious, Baconlicious showed up, wasn't expecting the double rotation. Yeah, I would have just tried to run, honestly. You got the one kill. Uh, just get out before something worse happens. But Ace, meanwhile, attack speed insane over here. Getting endless poke to that turret. Running away, even though there is nothing to run away from. Doesn't know that, so it's good to be cautious. Might grab this control ward here. Does not grab the control ward. And you can see that Phoenix has a lot of aggressive uh, ward coverage on blue side for Northern Stone Storm. So they'll know exactly where this pony is, uh, so they can play a little bit more aggressively as you see that they are. Oh. The soldier's just jumping very, right in there on Bacon. flashes on bot lane, so we'll be seeing that Chaos does not have his. And TARDIS no longer has his flash anymore either. Well, he wasn't using it earlier. Spicy right. meme spotted here immediately. A stashes right away. Level of escapes that Azir can get are pretty cool. Still no boots on Shen. Why you do this? Lofi Senpai spots out uh, the pony, so he's going to clear out that ward. That's going to remove a little bit of vision. Yep, playing it safe. Always good. Picking up a lot of gold here by Ace in the mid lane. 25 CS lead here. That gives him overall a 800 Lofi. gold lead. Oh, oh my, Lofi is going to... Oh, he ends up getting out of it. And they're calling it off. There was a big hook there in the bot lane as well, but there was no follow up on it. There might be a follow up here, oh, though. Another one. Oh, big ult, though. All right. So they got the Terra ult. That's something. Top lane, though. A lot of trouble here for poor Lofi. This is the revenge of the top laner here. Sick of getting bullied by the singed all last game. Yeah, I was sick and tired of him being annoying, and this time. Uh, with a champion that isn't annoying because it doesn't do too much, but a champion that's annoying because it has tentacles that does things for you. So. A lot of good pushing down here in the bot lane, though. Uh, almost a thousand gold lead. Gonna get a lot off this turret probably before mid bot lane comes back to help out. Protect the turret. Yeah, they're gonna get like three stacks on this. Yeah, I mean, you look at just the standard gold difference right now, 16k to 13k. 10 minutes in, you're already at a 3k gold lead. Uh, one dragon, um, it's all those plates. And it's oh. a lot of plates. Baconlicious going in here. Ace tries to do something cute with the wall. Uh, I don't know, I'm wondering what direction misclick that was. Because there were a couple of ways that could have been a misclick. Was he pushing the, uh, the echo back? Or was he trying to push the Echo under turret? Uh, you know, that's a very good question. I don't know. Uh, it could have been maybe a fat finger of a key. We're going to go with that. I'm going to try to take Ace's side on this one. All right. Yeah, there's a big CS lead in all lanes. This is where the 3,000 gold is coming from. 69 to 33, 60 to 47, 93 to 58, 89 to 70. Yeah, I mean, you can see uh, Riot's bounty system. Uh, see Riot's bounty system working wonders. 500 bounty on a zero, zero, zero. Oh, we're going to have a big fight here by the Herald. Spicy Hot Meme running away from the tentacles does get away. Everyone just rushes out thanks to the dead scuttle crap. And as somebody in the chat, Jester, points out, Shen has boots now. So he is running like normal. Oh, thank God. In his, in his uh, run dab kind of format. Uh, yeah. Thank, thank you for pointing that out, Jester. You have soothed my weary soul. 
Meanwhile, Envy the Serpent is trying to solo down in the bot lane and doing a reasonable job of it. You would think a solo Sivir would not be that scary, but they're giving her all sorts of respect. Ace, meanwhile, a little bit of trouble. Good Ooh, wall man, there. That was a beautiful wall. I mean, he's still going to draw. Oh, there's the flash. There's the Oh, <laughs> and here comes the channel. There is a whole lot of resources going into this. And TARDIS is just doing dragon. Chaos wanders right into the dragon pit. Who's going to steal this? They do get the dragon, but Phoenix is in a lot of trouble. Four, man. That's... They lost a lot more than what they needed to. TARDIS needed to get off of the dragon the moment that he saw that Hecarim was still chasing after the Azir. He could have saved his life, gotten the kill on Hecarim, and then turned on the dragon. Right. There was no reason why he couldn't have just turned around there. Bad awareness by uh, Alonzi. And that's going to give uh, Northern Storm a chance to get back into this game. Big collapse now on Gregosaurus. Let's see what happens. The flame misses utterly. You should just go back, man. What are you doing? Oh, they actually back off. We do have the Vi come in to assist. Vi does have the uh, Herald available. Pony heading up. Phoenix is lucky they got that dragon at all, honestly. Yeah, he missed the smite. Uh, Taurus did miss that smite. And Lofi Senpai is actually really, really low right now. Yep, really, really low. Up. There it is. Bicey Up meme is just waiting. Ace sees him, sends in some dudes. And here goes first turret. Are and they going to follow that all the way to the second tier, though? Ace gets hit, more than likely. Oh, doesn't even need to chase himself out here. Oh, Chaos is going to try something clever. Does land the stun on the Sivir, but there is no follow-up. Hecarim is collapsing, and they do know it. Big hit there by Shelly. Gregosaurus tries the flay. Oh, pull back oh. here. No lantern. That's the end of Vi. Pulling is not the greatest idea there. Defensive Sivir alt. Sivir keeps trying to help Gregosaurus when she's got to be running here. Throws back another Q. Big damage there. Should be able to get oh, away. Here comes the Predator. Does he have the E? He has the E, uh, but he's going to call it off. Ace, meanwhile, manages to get away. Once again, using uh, his wall to try to keep Baconlicious off him. This definitely feels like a game that Northern Storm is slowly gaining control of. Yeah, I mean, other than the macro play of what's going on on the map and being be ahead when it comes to the CS difference, uh, the turret difference, um, yeah, it's it's looking like Northern Storm has a very, very good idea on what they need to do to take out Phoenix. Oh, Envy's going to get grabbed here possibly... No. They need more wards. They need a lot more wards if Phoenix is going to stay in this game. There's a lot of ambushes they could easily avoid. Gregosaur is missing another flay. Very interesting. Off of the top lane, Lofi goes down again. Missed that one that time. Spicy yeah, Meme could actually get taken out here. We'll see what happens. If he's asleep at the wheel, these tentacles could do a lot of work. They do know where he is, I believe, as well, but no one is in a position to take advantage of it. Uh, he's going to be taking those, uh, those Ooh. fruits, so he'll be fine. Gregosaurus' hook misses by centimeters. All right, so poor Lofi is just getting eaten alive up in the top lane. One and four. Yeah, and even though you see a huge 44 CS difference in the top lane, Lofi can't turn it into a uh, into a lead. Oh, here comes the combo. Good push there. I have a feeling that Ace is just saving that ult specifically for when Hecarim shows up. Which I'm not mad about. That is something that uh, Ace is planning ahead, and he's doing it very well. I don't think they want to be this far forward, though, with all four members. Well, Chen's going back now, but for a minute there, it looked like they were going to get segmented. They did see it coming, though. Their wards are finally doing their job. Lofi is trying to solo farm in the bot lane, try to get a split push going. I don't like Alawi split pushing that much. Gregosaurus uh, not on point today with those hooks. Uh, yeah, you're 100% right. Um, 
you know, you're right. They're having Lofi split push, but look at this mid lane. Just getting dove. Gregosaurus goes down. Now, even though it's, I mean, kind of working, uh, can we take a look at Echo's build right now? Uh, a new large rod and the revolver. Um, I'm surprised we're not seeing a Sheen or him just go straight for that uh, proto belt that I'm assuming he's going for. He must have found himself with a lot of gold in his pocket, just decided to turn it into points. All right, where's that Karth Assault that we all need here? Oh, they do Whoa. pick him up. Oh! Very nice. Oh my god. Envy with a triple kill. That is not something you want to see right after you get that Tristana back onto track. Half of that triple kill was 1Q besides. Absolutely insane. If Phoenix does end up winning this game, that's the turnaround point right there. They've gotten... Three turrets and a triple kill in about as much time as it takes to say this sentence. Um, I was just about to say, uh, Echo ended up going back, got into base, and then came back to lane, and he's still sitting on 2100 gold. He didn't buy anything when he went back. He does have the belt now. He does have the belt now. Uh, Mountain Drake goes to blue side to Phoenix. Good job on Phoenix for getting pretty much every single dragon other than a Mountain last game. Baron up in a minute 40. We have the chat talking about it. Uh, some saying that Sheen would be better. Um, Fat Lee suggests that they're just trying to go for higher burst potential. And and yeah, as Jester pointed out, 1,200 gold just got into the pocket of that Sivir. That is very, very scary. Yep, Sivir's got a 1,300 gold lead on Tristana now. Ace up in the mid lane, Echo, there's trying to be maybe some rotations onto Echo in that bot lane. Um, Hecarim looked like he was thinking about heading up, but might just be doing a ward sweep. Ace heading back, so he won't be in any tr danger anyway. Shen's ult is available. Shen at level 12 now, so that ult is level 2, which is when it really starts to become readily available. Yeah, the cooldown on it drops substantially. The shield on it gets bigger as well. Um... I mean, I'm intrigued to see on if they're going to continue going with uh, the Hecarim channel, and he gets hooked, ults away. Meanwhile, Lofi doing a lot of damage to Baconlicious's little ghost here. Um, no one is collapsing on them, though. They had been planning on it, but now they're going to look as though they're going to try to get in the mid lane. Big hook on the Terek. Terek is going to get deleted here. So there goes the ultimate button. Once again, Spicy Out Meme just kind of dashes through with his slash. Shen is going to need to ult somebody in a minute here. Possibly Baconlicious. Lofi is just punishing this poor little child. Oh, and there goes the Tristana. They are... Phoenix is making all of those leads. And a lot. Lofi just finishes off uh, Baconlicious. That's awesome. Looks as I'm though... I'm glad to see that he's finishing off that kill. Looks as though there was a Shen ult in the making, but the target of it got killed before it could complete. And this is a... Compared to how Phoenix looked in game one, this is very impressive. Right, Phoenix is very uh, composed. They're doing everything almost perfectly. Well, we'll see if there's any punishment here. I don't think there will be. Chaos does take a lot of damage, though. Dragon is not going to be up for a while yet. Ah, yes, lest we forget, Azir makes turrets. Gonna need to be reminded every week that Ace plays Azir. <laughs> very, very true. Now, another thing that is, you know, that I'm happy to see on this one is, you know, I said it about 10 minutes ago, you know, the massive gold lead difference, and a lot of it was coming from the CS difference. Uh, you look at it now, 6k, 6.5k, that's huge. Yeah. Six towers as well. Six to zero towers besides. That's got to feel bad for Northern Storm. Right. Uh, Northern Storm, they were able to get a lot of picks. But unfortunately, every single time they got a pick, they weren't able to commit to getting any turrets. I mean, pretty much the only turret that is in immediate danger is going to be that mid-tier. And 
It still has a good chunk of health left. Lofi gets spotted. At the point, though, where she should be able to survive here. This is a big teleport. There's that spellbook, Sivir. Teleport. Yeah, switching it. over to the heal now, so she'll have heal the moment that this, uh, if this fight breaks out. Let's see if any steal comes here. Spicy I Meme's thinking about it. He dashes in, does not manage to steal it, is going to get picked off more than likely. He should have ended up using the blasting. Alon Z dashes in very aggressively, but Northern Storm was not expecting it and not able to collapse and pick him off immediately. Super minions crash in the base. Yep. And F they're gonna run this down. Honestly, I'm. This might be uh, a very fast match. 22 and a half minutes in. Well, we'll so see. A big Shen alt could do a lot, or a big Shen taunt could do a lot for this team here. But we'll see what happens. Um, Ace staying in the back line. Shen tries to dash in, only manages to get the Sivir. That might be enough. Spicy out meme taken very low. Chaos taken very low. Everyone just taken down. That is Stana just sitting under Nexus turrets. Uh, that's you know what that's probably going to be GG. Twenty seconds. Can uh, Phoenix take it down? I think they have the power to do so. Tristana probably can't do this alone, but should try to do it anyway. Fawn doesn't want to die, though. So from a very close, almost thrown game one, Phoenix dominates game two. 23 minutes. That was flawless by Phoenix. Well, Their CS leads, incredible. Uh, them getting the turrets, incredible. Getting the dragons, great. You know, they... They showed a lot of good things, and yes, they died 10 times. Yes, it started to look like Northern Storm was going to get ahead. I'm still going to say that Phoenix dominated that game. Well, the scraps certainly show it. Three people out damaged the entirety of Northern Storms. Yes. Unfortunately, the Vi didn't get to come online as much as she wanted to. Um... But the big thing is, you know, her and Alawi did what they were supposed to be, right in the front line and get a lot of uh, attention. Also on top of that, Thrush did incredible by getting a lot of the map, so they were able to spot whenever the Hecarim was coming, um, Echo Rotations, Shen Ultis, it's just really, really well played. All right, while we have an interview with uh, Alan Z. Tardis, I will head over there, and I believe I'll have to drag you with me. Okay. And uh, we all know what my first question is going to be. Hello, Alan Z. How's it going? Going well. How are you? Well, I'm confused. What's going on with that Rex side pick? <laughs> um, I played Rex side when she came out a while ago, and then played a couple of games on her when they redid her old. Uh, but it was more so just to keep it out of spicy memes hands. So. Yeah, I mean that's what I figured when you guys banned it in uh, in game two there. But we also noticed you moved over to the uh, to the Vi. Um, are you shying away from your tank heavy playstyle in the jungle with the Zac and the Amumu? Um, no, it's more so it's just switch into how our comps work. Also, Vi can get dragon before I'm pretty sure anybody else can right now when it comes to the jungle, maybe except for like Yi. So um, the whole idea was based around objectives and also Vi is an encounter to Hecarim. As soon as Hecarim tries jumping in, she just cues him and he stops moving. So, mm. and the lockdown with the ult, so. Okay, so I got a question myself. I question it the moment that we got into game. Why, what, what was the thought process behind Electrocute over Conquer. Um, I don't think Conqueror is good on Vi. Uh, it takes sure you have to stay in the Rexai, not Vi. Rexai, yeah, oh. on, uh, on the Rexai, because that is that's one of the major things. Rexai right now on this patch is one of the best junglers. And uh, I played games with it. I wasn't really honestly that impressed with it. Um, 
you have to duel pretty long for it to come online. And Rek'Sai, in my opinion, is not as good as everybody thinks. She's squishy, and the only reason she can get really far ahead is if she ends up being 3-0. and And the way I play her doesn't fit that play style. So I chose instead to go Electrocute. Um, personally, I hate Rek'Sai. I hate the champ so much. But it works for her in our favor, so that's why we T picked it. Took one for the team. What a player. Yeah. So. All right. So game one... Um... You got you guys are really well game two, so I'm also going to talk about game one. Um, you fell behind, at least in momentum, if not in everything else, relatively early. Um, how did you guys manage to come back? What were you working with? Do you think to that you managed to turn that around? Um, we just try to stay on tilted. It's it's more so like we point out the weaknesses that we did and we figure out what we can learn from them. So like when we were down near Dragon Pit and Norm got caught by the Scion Q, I messed up and decided to go in um, and we all ended up losing that team fight, but Lofi kept pushing and we were like, okay, what did we do wrong? What we did is we jumped into the engage and we did it. All we need to do is let Lofi keep pushing. So for us, it's just more of like, a, you constantly need to adapt. And if you don't adapt, you lose. That's how League works. At least from my pr perspective. Alright. Adapting constantly in-game. Lots of uh, people <laughs> could probably learn from that, I'm sure. Um, so you guys are now, according to this updated scoreboard, I guess I just got, still tied in first place um, up against option 12. Um, how scared are you, are you of option 12? I'm not scared of them at all. You're not scared of option 12, all right? No. And why is that? Um, from my perspective, um, it seems like the reason option 12 has won, and I mean, this has happened with us too, is that uh, the other teams have thrown. Like tonight, White Wolf was ahead, in my opinion, and they just, you know, Arcane Soda just got caught out. Um, I also think that, you know, their mid laner, uh, his play style doesn't fit. So, you know, I don't know. I don't see them that much as a threat. So, and we learned our lesson when we played against them. So now we're just out for revenge. Yeah, I was going to say, for the record, to everyone who didn't see week two, Phoenix got O2 would by option 12. So this is someone trash talking from a position of utter defeat. Okay. So, so I got a question myself. Uh, you did you watch the option twelve match today? I did. Yeah. So, what did you feel uh, compared to your games that you just played that you could implement against them that would give you guys a W in future matchups? I feel like if I say too much, Ace might fire me. <laughs> so, all I'm gonna. Say Say is that um, we look at what they do and then we try to do it better. Okay. To, to prevent Ace from murdering you in your sleep, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, congratulations on the wins. Uh, there were a lot of people, ourselves included, who did not think you guys were going to win game one. So, very well done and look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. I appreciate it. Alright, now I will kick Slack back to the broadcast. And I will join the broadcast. So here we are, end of the week. Um, we have the scoreboard up here. Option 12 and Phoenix still tied. Northern Storm, nine lives, uh, very much in the hunt. White Wolf Gaming, uh, I believe we have two weeks left. Um, could definitely come back with a couple of 2 O's. So no one is out yet. Very interested to see if um, Northern Storm is able to claw back... Um, after a very close game one against Phoenix. Oh, one week left? Okay, one week left. 12 versus Blitzkrieg will be um, another set of games. Then we have Phoenix versus White Wolf and Northern Storm versus Nine Lives. So Northern Storm and Nine Lives versus each other will be very interesting to see who can jockey for position at the end there. Uh, Slack, any closing statements? Yeah, uh, I'm super excited to see next week. Uh, as you just brought up, Northern Storm versus Nine Lives. Super, super anticipated for me. Uh, I feel like both 
teams are going to be doing a whole lot of research on how to beat each other. And I'm excited. Um, I don't want to get ahead myself and make a prediction already. Uh, but I am going to do it anyways. Okay. I'm going to say for uh, option 12 versus Blitzkrieg, 2-0. Then I'm going to move over to Phoenix versus White Wolf. I'm going to say Phoenix and White Wolf Gaming, 1-1. One, one. All right. Northern Storm versus Nine Live. If we see game two nine lives versus Northern Storm, 2 nine lives. Well, we do know how much Slackosaurus likes his predictions. So someone someone write that down. Uh, we have Loaf being very upset at your choices and wants your gifted sub back. Um but I'm sorry I'm sorry, Loafy. <laughs> hey. I had a lot of respect for that singe that you threw out, but uh, yeah, I got to put my predictions where uh, where I set them. All right. So um, coming up this week, uh, we of course have the podcast. Um, Sig may put out another one v one with Commissioner Sig. Check out that as well. Um, go to uh, gmagaming dot com. See some announcements. See some other content that we have posted up there. Uh, Subscribe if you haven't already with Twitch Prime. Got a few more Twitch Prime subs today. And otherwise, um, I and the rest of the cast and crew will see you here next week. Thanks for listening. Have a good night. Bye-bye.